What's up, y'all? Thank you for joining us here today. I am here with my good friend, fellow certified financial planner practitioner, Marshall Johnson here with us. Hey, hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, and this is our opportunity to cover a weekend reading article with you. So what is weekend reading? Well, weekend reading is an email that hits your inbox every single Friday. Marshall and I, we do the research for you. We sift through hundreds of articles and we deliver to you four articles on trending topics in the financial planning space to help you make better financial decisions along with commentary from ourselves, uh, takeaways, uh, breakdowns of the articles, and some other really cool resources, book giveaways, webinar invitations, event invites, so much more. All you have to do to sign up is text WR to 866-482-9559, 866-482-9559. So this week, we're going to be hitting on Ooh, a headline grabber yeah, right here. Go. We're right. going to be covering an article from Financial Advisor Magazine titled, Why is the Market Going Down? Yeah. yeah I, I think we all kind of have that question. From Everybody time wants to, to time. know. Right? What, what, what's really funny is we never ask that question what's going up. Yeah, why is yeah. the market <laughs> Why is the market going, going up, up why so did fast? I, why did I make 20% <laughs> I think we year. asked that yeah. question quite a bit uh, post-pandemic, right? And, you know, following March of 2020, markets taken off, mar economies in the dumps. We're going, right. What's going on? You know, the, the market's taken off here. This doesn't make sense. Then we asked it, right? I, I don't know that we asked that question in the moment. for the many years, you know, mm -hmm. from 2010 up to, you know, 2020. But you know, this is a question that I think is relatively important for us to ask. We want to ask that. Why is the market going down? Why is the market going up? I think it's important for us to understand the basics of economics mm -hmm. to really be better investors. At the same time, Avoiding this question isn't going to hurt you uh, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. because we just need to do what we're supposed to do, continue to invest. Yeah, especially if you've got a plan, right? You know, we talk about retirees a lot on this show. Uh, it may be a little bit different if you don't have a plan that's prepared for the worst. We talk about this all the time, trying to prepare for the worst and understanding where the economy is and understanding your plan. But that... Uh, Aside. Well, it's it's the question of why are you asking why yeah, the market's that's going what I was down? Going. Right? Yeah, like why <laughs> why like, does it matter if the market's up or down? Yeah. But in times like these, it, it, I would read this article if I didn't understand what was going on in the markets. And let's be honest, nobody's got a crystal ball, right? But Brad McMillan here in Financial Advisor Magazine, he wrote a pretty good article that I think is pretty timely. It is. Yeah, and I, I think so. There's probably a couple different reasons you're asking that question. Really, probably two. You know, mm -hmm. one. You just want to understand things. You want to have a better understanding of the economy. You want to be a better investor. The other one is the more sinister one. You know, that's the question you're asking because you don't have confidence in your financial plan. Mm -hmm. You're unsure how this market's going to leave you when you get to retirement or through retirement. And if right. that's why you're asking this question, that's a big old red flag to say, you don't have a plan. You right. need a different plan or a different strategy. And that means we need to drill down and better understand that strategy, what your goals are, and start building it moving forward. But hey, that, that's neither here nor there. Why is the market going down? Yeah, Brad, Brad kicks off this article saying the economy seems to be doing well, job growth still at high levels, consumer spending still healthy, businesses continuing to invest. Does the stock market really directly reflect the economy? Well, before we get there, let, let's mm -hmm. uh, clear the air here. We're recording this uh, Tuesday right now. So we're Time recording this uh, Tuesday, uh, May 3rd, just to make sure you understand uh, where the market is today right. and kind sure. of relative to this article. Mm -hmm. So that, and, and before I actually tell you where the market is today, uh, let's talk about these three elements, job growth at high levels, consumer mm -hmm. spending healthy, businesses contending to invest. So job growth at high levels, uh, right now job growth is near an eight year high. Mm -hmm. okay? Job growth's at an eight year high. Wages have increased 11 straight months, 11 straight months in a row. And spending is rising faster than inflation. That's consumer spending is right. rising at a faster rate than inflation, albeit not by much, not okay? By much. Like two yeah. tenths of a percent, but still inflation's pretty darn hot. So seeing consumer spending keep up, that's a really good thing for the economy. Businesses investing uh, in equipment and machinery, that's up 15% year over year, business investments in equipment and machinery. Intellectual property, also an inter interesting one up 8.1% 
year over year. So why then, let me get to it, why then is the S&P 500 down 13%? Why is the Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 10%? Why is the NASDAQ down around 20%? If job growth is so good, consumer spending is so darn good, and businesses are continuing to be so darn optimistic, why is the market going down? And, and it's not just businesses and consumers here. I mean, look at Warren Buffett. You know, mm -hmm. Warren Buffett in Q1 of this year dropped 51 billion bucks, right? $51 mm -hmm. billion, dollars, largest ever buying spree that you've seen Berkshire Hathaway go on. And how how many years have you heard from Buffett saying there's the nothing to buy? There's yeah, nothing the to buy. There's nothing to buy. We're holding, yeah. And that just shows you, says, hey, there are opportunities in this market. Mm -hmm. And when people are fearful, what are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be greedy. And right now, if you look at the, the fear and greed index, it's put out by CNBC, we're at a 27, okay? On a scale of zero to 100, that mm -hmm. puts us at, at a high fear level, right? Not extreme fear, but we're only a couple points away from extreme fear right now. And I like checking in with that fear and greed index and going, okay, what should I be doing? Because mm -hmm. you should probably be doing whatever the opposite that <laughs> that indicator is doing uh, traditionally. Yeah, and you look at that index and you see these spikes, right? There's things that happen from time to time that spike fear and greed. And usually they don't stay there for a long time. So when you're seeing a spike, could it go higher? Sure, it could go higher. But the point is that usually these these fears uh, recede at some point in the not too distant future. Yeah. Yeah. And when in looking at the projections for the S&P 500 from a couple of different um, sources, major economists at Goldman, uh, Morgan Stanley, Goldman put a uh, year end forecast at 4,700. Uh, worst case Ooh. scenario, 3,600. Where are we at today? Around 4150. Uh, if we look at Morgan Stanley, they're putting it at 4400 by the end of the year. So by by most estimates, we're expecting to see some recovery by the end of the year. We're also expecting to see further drawdown before mm -hmm. the end of the year. Uh, what should that tell you? Uh, that should tell you maybe I shouldn't panic right now. Uh, and maybe I should also looking look for some opportunities that are probably going to arise mm -hmm. in the coming months. If not, you know, you're, you've got a long-term horizon. My my son just gave me 20 bucks last night and wanted to put it in the stock market. And because he gives us 20, we put 20 into his raw. So oh, he's you got give him $40 a match. that throws yeah, like in. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. we give him a match to do it. And he's, I mean, he's looking at it from a long-term perspective, right? He's not going to touch this for, you know, roughly 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, if it's not maybe 50 or 60 years. You know? So right, if right. you are a long-term investor, I think all of these opportunities when the market's down 10, 20%, these are all really good opportunities to have some cash on the sidelines and take advantage of those dips. So what's going on? Is the market the economy? Does the stock market directly affect, uh, directly tell us what the economy is doing? It's not. You know, the article here is pointing to two things. There is a link here, but what the stock market's really tracking is corporate earnings and interest rates. Here are the two big factors that are driving the market. Yeah. I'll also say the market is a forward-looking indicator. I don't think that was clearly laid out in mm -hmm. here, right? The market is always factoring in what we should see in the future, not exactly yeah. what's going on in the economy today. That's right. You know, when we talk about things being priced in, by the time you and I are talking about higher inflation, by the time you and I are talking about interest rates uh, going up, the market has largely priced all of that in. Mm -hmm. It's the known knowns, right? We knew we knew this was coming. But, but Brad, in this article, uh, says that uh, corporate earnings, yeah, of course, uh, grow when the economy grows, mm -hmm. right? So when interest rates uh, are a reasonably steady, the market grows with the economy. So that's why we, we kind of associate those two things together. Uh, but the reality is interest rates are going to drive things tremendously more than than the economy. Yeah, I mean, look at corporate earnings, for instance, mm -hmm. earnings right now are up 25%. This is year over year, 25% increase in, in corporate earnings. That's the largest increase since 1976. Jeez. That's Huge. But we also have this risk of interest rates increasing in the future. And the Fed has publicly committed that they're going to continue to raise interest mm -hmm. rates, you know, throughout the end of the year. And most economists, you know, are expecting uh, three half point rate heights mm -hmm. through the end of the year, followed by three quarter point rate heights uh, through the end of the year. And so potentially around, six rate hikes before yeah, the end of the year. And, and putting us where? 2.4%? Mm -hmm. uh, not the end of the world, but that is a headwind, right? That's a headwind that the market is currently currently pricing in. What's going to happen over the couple months is over the next several months as the market's pricing in this expectation is that we end the year at 
percent, a modest increase in, infl- in, in interest rates. But if we have a shock to that, if all of a sudden uh, inflation isn't under control, we see mm-hmm. another spike in inflation and the Fed goes, oh, you know, actually, we're going to have to jump from a half a point to three quarter point right. rate hike. And mm-hmm. that or have could, eight to 10 rate hikes. That would sure. that would create some damage. Right. The, the unknown of of these rates is causing uh, the, the market to react the way it is. But it's still going to be somewhat limited, as he points out here in this article. Well, I think it's short-term damage, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're going to see some short-term damage, but that really leaves us with opportunities today to take advantage of what is the long-term growth in the stock market, the cyclicality of the market. I, I, what we saw in March of 2020, that was an unknown unknown. Yeah. We could have never mm-hmm. predicted at that point in time that we're going to have a global pandemic and the whole world's going to shut down, right? right? And we saw a sharp drop off in the stock market. Today, we have something that's cyclical. Mm-hmm. You know, we ha- can see, yes, we have inflation. There's things we need to do to control it and how we're going to control it is through interest rates. Uh, what we don't know is how big those increases are going to be in the coming mm-hmm. months or, or even years for that matter. Yeah. And the market's already pricing in the fact that there's going to be rate decreases after that, right? So we're going to have this period where interest rates go up. It's going to slow the economy. There's going to be slower growth. That's going to reduce the valuations, but they're already pricing in future rate decreases and what that'll do to long-term earnings. Yeah. And and the market is, and and the article showing, hey, we could see another 10% downside in Mm -hmm. the market. And even from a technical perspective, sometimes the market is completely irrational and just moves due to technical indicators. Mm -hmm. And so could Mm -hmm. we see that? Absolutely. We could see another 10% downside. And I think that's what you're seeing from a lot of the, you know, uh, major economists and talking heads is, yes, we're, we're probably headed towards a little bit further to the downside. Right. Does that mean you liquidate everything, go to cash and wait for it to go down? Nope, they're not always right. As a matter of fact, they're usually wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talk <laughs> about bear markets and when you actually cross over into a bear market, well, the NASDAQ's already there, right? Bear, NASDAQ's in a, in a bear market, but not the S&P or the Dow Jones. So a lot of times these are self-fulfilling prophecies and the market kind of keeps extending the losses till it hits those breakpoints, right? We get a 10% correction we get a, a 20% drawdown. Okay, now we're in a we're in a bear market, right? But that can be healthy, right? We're resetting yeah. expectations. Uh, we need to get our own house in order if those things are occurring and we're going to be better prepared. Now is the time to to uh, reshuffle your portfolios and get into those and buy the quality. Like you said, Warren Buffett's mm-hmm. on a spending spree. It's like upgrade those holdings, get situated for the next uh upside event. Yeah, my seven-year-old is uh, still investing right now. So am I. (laughs) He's got a long-term time horizon. Well, maybe. Now, if you're 70, you you might be thinking about this a lot different than a seven-year-old, but that doesn't mean you don't take advantage of the opportunities because you're probably still going to be investing for 20 years, at least, maybe 30 years even. So if you have the opportunity to invest when the market's down, we should always take advantage of that. And the other side of that coin, if you've got everything, every dollar of your life savings, you've been following uh, you know, the Bogleheads and you have it all in the S&P 500, well, maybe it's time to reshuffle. Maybe it's time to re take another look at that strategy and put together a real income strategy at the very least. So why is the market down? Because the Fed's, the Fed's raising rates. Right, right. right. Well, and there's, <laughs> there's some business going on in Europe that's creating some uncertainty too, right? Things could escalate there and create additional pressure on the market. So those are some of the, the somewhat known unknowns. We know that there's a conflict, mm-hmm. but we don't know how it's going to be resolved. So yeah. there's some, some unknowns there. That well, there's could... also some unknown unknowns. Mm-hmm. We know that you know, we never know. Right, we, 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 we never, never know. know what might hit. I mean, we saw nine eleven, or we saw the the COVID, the, the pandemic. I think right. you know, if you're in that position, you have a long term time horizon. Stay the course. Just know that some of those things are going to happen. Keep yeah. some dry powder on the sidelines. If you're in retirement, think about it a little differently. Right, mm-hmm. you might want to think about restructuring your strategy. Yeah, that's why we talk about a framework, right? We want to have a framework for the decisions that we're making. We need some liquidity for safety and opportunities. You talk about dry powder. If you if you had a full liquidity bucket, you're ready to go, right? If your income's taken care of, you don't have to worry about the day-to-day movements of the market. You're worried about inflation. So yes, you have some growth assets over here. Having a, f- a plan and a framework mm-hmm. for why you're making decisions is key to everything. Well, I'm going to end with this. We talked about this a lot uh, during 2020 when the market was down. Yeah, this can be an, a beautiful 
opportunity right now in a low tax rate environment to take advantage of doing Roth conversions. Mm -hmm. You see your portfolio down, say, 20% at some point this year. Um, maybe you want to leave it there, convert it, continue to hold on to those holdings, but convert that over to a Roth IRA or a chunk thereof. Mm -hmm. You can, you might be able to cover your tax burden uh, by simply taking advantage of those depressed prices and allowing them to recover in the future. Yeah, not to mention tax loss harvesting in those non-qualified accounts, trying to take advantage of those losses in your after-tax accounts, being prepared to utilize those losses to maybe offset some of the gains from previous uh, previous trades, but also going forward, you can carry forward those losses as well. So don't be greedy when others are fearful. Just be smart.